Hello and welcome back to building a web server. So in the previous videos already, we've kind of talked about this concept of using a system call to start truly interacting with the world. But our goal right now is to build a web server. So how do we start doing internet talking uh, interactions with the world? How do we do network system calls? In this video, we're gonna be talking about that. So there's a number of system calls related to networking, related to being able to start accessing the internet. Um, and the first of those is the socket system call. So a socket is a type of file, it, as we'll learn through all sorts of material on Linux. Um, a lot of concepts are represented as files and the networking file concept is a socket. So a socket creates, a, so when you perform a socket system call, it creates an endpoint for communication and returns a file descriptor that refers to that endpoint. So a socket really is just this concept of a file that has a, an A point and a B point and somehow they're linked up. And hopefully it makes sense that in a networking concept, uh, context, networking context, we would need some sort of endpoint for communication that gets us from A to B, right? When eventually we're traveling across the internet, um, we need a endpoint for communication. We need a socket. So the socket system call creates this kind of file-like thing, and it really is a file, but this file-like thing um, that is going to allow us to start doing networking related communication. So we use the socket system call, we get a socket. Okay, but how do we uh, continue from there? So uh, the next system call, and is kind of we're going to see that we take a series of system calls in order to ultimately connect out to the internet, start listening on the internet for networked traffic. Uh, the next system call that we're going to perform is the bind system call. And the bind system call, we can see that first argument takes a socket FD or a sock FD. That's going to be kind of the result of that socket system call. And the description says that when a socket is created with the socket system call, it exists in a namespace address family, but has no address assigned to it. Bind assigns the address specified by adder to the socket referred to by the file descriptor sock FD. So there's a lot of technical language. Um, and the reason for that, we'll kind of understand as we continue on, is that this series of system calls is kind of very generic, and that's why it has to use this technical generic language. For example, we might be uh, talking to the internet, but we might also be talking over Bluetooth, which is going to do something fundamentally different than internet. Or we might be talking to what's called a Unix socket, which is like this uh, even closer to a file thing. There's all types of sockets that you might create, not just necessarily an internet socket. And we're gonna see what it looks like to set up an internet socket. Okay, so we use the bind system call and we'll see, this will make a little bit more sense once we look at the structure of a sock adder. So let's take a look at that. So a struct sock adder is just a blob of data. And it's a very generic blob of data. So we saw previously that the bind system call takes a struct sock adder. And this is a generic blob of data that is, uh, let's see here, um, uh, 16 bytes in length, right? We have this uint 16, that's two bytes. And then uint eight, we got 14 of those. So we have this 16 byte blob of data that represents a socket address. Um, and it's a generic type because the very first two bytes of this kind of specify the type of socket that it is, this SA underscore family. So again, we might have an internet socket, we might have a Bluetooth socket, we might have a Unix socket, we have all sorts of connective sockets that aren't necessarily internet connective. And the SA family is the generic way that we're going to be able to specify what kind of socket it is. So we're going to see that we also have the struct sock adder underscore in. And this is a specific type of sock adder. This is uh, also 16 bytes in size. And it also starts with that two bytes to represent kind of the family, the type. Um, and then it uses uh, within the generic version, the sock adder, that data portion, it uses that data portion to represent the port and the interface address to bind to, as well as eight bytes of padding because it just doesn't need the rest of that space. So what does this mean? What am I talking about here? Well, if we wanted to build up one of these sock adder ins in for internet, um, we would just have this blob of data 
where we have this first field and this blob of data, right? It could live in memory because that system call is looking for a pointer and a pointer is just gonna be a location in memory that's gonna contain this data that the system call is interested in. We have this blob of data sitting in memory. And the first thing that we're gonna specify is the family. And the family in this case of creating an internet uh, socket is an AFINet. That's, that's just what the family is called. Um, and by definition, that value is two. AF underscore INET is a constant that is two. And ultimately when the kernel goes through and gets this bind system call and it starts inspecting this sock adder, it's gonna see, okay, we're looking at two, which is an internet type of socket, which means now we know how to interpret the rest of the data. The rest of the data, the next little blob, is the port. So in this case, we're doing this H2NS we're doing host to networking translation, um, which in our context means basically we're gonna convert this number from little endian to big endian. Um, not totally sure why, but for some reason networking likes to work on big endian integers. So a lot of what we've seen so far has been little endian integers. Our x86 CPUs are processing little endian integers. There's a lot of benefits of little endian integers. Uh, for whatever reason, the standard is that networking operates very heavily on big endian integers instead. And that's why we can see that we have 0050, if that means this uh, least significant portion is actually to the right in memory. It's further along. So we, we have the most significant byte first rather than the least significant byte first, which is why it's a big endian integer. And that takes up two bytes. The next thing we're gonna specify is kind of the interface that we want to get ready to be bound to. Um, so in this case, we're imagining this concept of, hey, maybe we're just gonna listen on localhost. And also this is just like the port, a big endian integer. So we have 127001, this is a four byte value because we're working on, uh, we don't need to get super in depth onto it, but we're working in IPv4 and that IPv4 ultimately allows for addresses of four bytes. So we're ultimately gonna be working on a four byte space. And we can see that this is a big endian integer as well. We have 7F000001. And that would be the equivalent, maybe you've heard of localhost and localhost kind of being interchangeable with 127001. Um, that is what we're setting up for here. Uh, alternatively, we could set up to just listen on or be bound to any interface, it doesn't matter, because your computer might have several networking cards, you might be communicating with all sorts of different types of networks. Um, and in that case, if you're just down to be bound to any interface, you would just do 0.0.0.0. .0. That means be uh, bound to all of the interfaces, and in that case, all of these bytes would be just zeros in memory. And then finally, we have those padding bytes that are just all zeros because they uh, ultimately do not matter. We are not interested in that region of memory. We've got this sock adder that is exactly 16 bytes and we don't care about the rest of it in order to do an internet socket. Okay, so we saw the socket system call, we saw, saw the bind system call. The next system call that's highly relevant is the listen system call. If we wanna build a web server, Ultimately, we're going to be listening on the network for data, for connections. And the listen system call marks the socket referred to by SOCFD as a passive socket. That is, as a socket that will be used to accept incoming connection requests using the accept system call. And as you can imagine, the next system call we're gonna look at is in fact the accept, accept system call. So that listen system call just said, okay, we're ready to start listening for uh, connections. So we kind of created a socket, we bound it to some uh, interface and some port. Uh, previously we kind of just bound it to local host and bound it to port 80. You can imagine just uh, listening for local web traffic only, uh, port 80 being the HTTP standard port. And then we did listen, so now we're ready to receive a connection. And once we finally want to go through and accept a connection, we use the accept system call. So the accept system call is used with connection-based socket types, such as sock underscore stream, sock underscore seek packet. Um, it extracts the first connection request on the queue of pending connections for the listening socket, SockFD, creates a new connected socket and returns a new file descriptor referring to that socket. So the result of this accept system call is going to be another socket and specifically a file descriptor referring to that socket that is going to be um, the accepted connection. So let's see what that looks like altogether. Uh, if we want to go through and accept TCP IP network connections, which 
is what we're ultimately going to need to do if we want to build a web server. We need to start listening on the TCP IP networking stack. Okay, so we create a socket. In this case, we're saying it's an AFI underscore, or AF underscore INET, so it's basically an internet socket. It's a SOC underscore stream, which kind of implies uh, TCP to some extent. You could instead do uh, a UDP socket and listen on, or uh, be bound to that instead. But in this case, we're doing kind of a TCP socket. It's streamed, it's a streamed connection. And then we say IP proto underscore IP, kind of again, we're saying, uh, that we want to be doing an IP sort of socket. So we have internet, TCP, IP, basically. It's kind of what that very roughly says. If you wanted more information, you'd read the documentation on what all of those constants really mean. So in doing so, we get this file descriptor three. In fact, we saw that in the kernel, file descriptor three got updated with this socket object that's gonna maintain a bunch of state related to that socket for us. Because again, the kernel is managing all of the stateful data kind of, in some sense, man managing all of that stateful data about the real world and its interactions with the real world. It's man maintaining that for us. Um, and then we perform the bind system call. So we're gonna bind that three socket that we uh, previously created. We're going to say that we want an AFI net um, binding and we want to bind to port 80. And in this case, instead of binding on local host with that 127001, we're gonna say, hey, we're open to the whole internet. Any of the interfaces that our hardware is connected to, I'm ready to listen or be bound to all of them. Um, which means if our, if our computer here is connected in some way to the internet, right, and we have an interface that's kind of ac accessing that internet there, um, we're gonna be ready to just start taking connections from the internet. Okay. So next we do the listen system call, which basically means, okay, we're, we're truly now we're ready to start accepting connections. And then we perform the accept system call and assuming that someone had tried to connect to our IP address on port 80, um, if that had occurred, when we, as soon as we do this accept, we'll immediately get a result of four, which is kind of represents a new socket. And that socket represents us talking straight to them over the internet. In some sense, it's kind of what that socket concept means. So we, we create a socket, we bind to it, we listen on it. And this socket now kind of represents this this concept of, okay, if anyone accesses our computer over IP on, Z on any interface, so let's just imagine they know our IP address somehow, they know our IP address, they try to connect to us on port 80, we've bound the socket up, and as soon as we accept on that system, on that socket, we're going to receive a new socket that just represents the direct communication over that specific connection. Okay. So this is the process of accepting a TCP IP network connection. That accept system call, if someone hadn't tried to connect to us, would just be blocking, waiting for someone to connect to us. We'd just be sitting there and the kernel would return to our user space program as soon as someone is in fact ready to start talking to us. And in accepting, now we have this file descriptor thing because it's a socket, right? It's a socket file descriptor gets returned by accept. And in the same way that we can start reading and writing to um, our terminal or this slash flag file or whatever else, we can start reading and writing to that socket to just start talking over the internet to that person. So this is the process for accepting a TCP IP network connection.